Now the problem is that your unconscious mind perceives any kind of change as negative and something that should be avoided. And this is why you can make conscious decisions to work towards your goals and to keep growing and evolving and invest in yourself and build a business. And yet if you've never done the work around your unconscious beliefs, the limiting story, working with your nervous system, you are literally going to cock block your own results. Welcome to the Empower and Evolve podcast, a space where we will explore topics ranging from mindset to career to business, energetics, spirituality, cyclical living, and beyond. I am your host, Kat Tunneberg. I am a mindset coach and integrative practitioner on a mission to help you take your life from meh to magical. Without further ado, let's plunge into today's episode. Hello, my love, and welcome to this juicy episode of the Empower and Evolve podcast, where I'm going to dive into the lessons, the realizations, and all the things behind my recent 10K week. First of all, I want to start by saying I posted about it and being like, oh my God, I just had my first 10K week. And then after I posted it, I had this little nudge and thought to myself, is it my first one though? And I started to think about back to the times when I know I've had some very successful months in my business. And there was two times that came to mind. There was September last year when I was launching my first mastermind, my first business mastermind. And then there was also November last year when I had a lot of new one-on-one clients join. So I actually went back through my financial trackers and I realized that I had already had my first 10K week back in November whilst I was actually taking my master practitioner training in NLP. (laughs) What? And it's actually pretty fun to think back to the fact that both times when I hit the 10K week, I wasn't necessarily working many hours in my business that week. Like when I was at MasterPrac, I was doing like maybe five to 10 hours of business work that week on the side of taking that really intensive training. And I mean, last week, I only worked 22 and a half hours as well. So it's pretty fun to think back to the commonality between those two times and just having some realizations around all of it. So anyway, yeah, it wasn't my first ever 10K week. (laughs) It was actually my second 10K week I've had since starting my business back in 2017. And it feels like such a big deal. There's so many things that have happened and so many lessons. And I've even taken notes. Like I don't normally show up for podcasts with notes, but today I have notes because I wanted to talk into quite a few little things that happened. And I think the the first thing that I want to really talk into is the one commonality between the two times when I had my 10K week, both in November and now this this year in August. And it's the spaciousness. It's really the concept of spaciousness. Like on the week when I hit my 10K week, I literally only worked 22 and a half hours that week. It's so interesting. I often get the projection that, you know, Kat, you've got so much going on. Like you must be so busy. And yeah, I have quite a few balls I'm juggling and I'm up to really cool things and really fun things. And I've never had as much spaciousness in my life as I'm having right now. And I feel like this is, um, I actually shared this on my stories. Someone else had done a post about it. But the whole concept of most people cannot fathom that you can be successful, really make an impact and have a lot of things that you're juggling and at the same time have spaciousness where you don't work crazy hours. Like I know a lot of people just 
can't fathom that. So I want to start this podcast with sharing this because I think it's so important to actually know that you do not have to work yourself to the ground to be financially successful. It's just not needed. It's not needed. If that's the story that you're telling yourself, then your unconscious mind is going to continuously be looking for examples and proof that that is the truth. And if you want to demantle that belief, you actually need to also look for proof of the opposite. So let me be your proof that there is the opposite available. Yay. (laughs) For me, this has been a really, really big thing I have been working on. And that is really like leaning into my human design in an empowering way. I'm a projector. Projectors aren't meant to be those that are working crazy hours because we don't have the same consistent energy. And we, our self-theme in human design is success. So we are really meant to cultivate success and we're meant to cultivate success because of how powerfully we see and how great we are at guiding people rather than how much we work, how many hours we work, how productive we are. What, like one of the pro- strengths of projectors is actually being super efficient with the amount of work that we do do. So I've really been leaning into this and reminding myself it is not my job to work more hours and I actually get paid for how powerfully I see. So I've really been leaning into this and it was really cool to get the confirmation of being like, oh my God, yeah, look at me. I have been working less and here I am hitting these amazing milestones. The other big piece that comes into play with this is when you run your own business, you don't get paid for the work you do today. If There is a bit of a lag effect here where the work you do today kind of puts a a base on it and you'll eventually get paid for it. So it's not, and this is really hard to conceptualize for people who haven't been in business for a while because we're so used to the whole I'm exchanging time for money concept. That's hard to wrap your head around the fact that sometimes the work you do today, you'll get paid for three months from now. So this is a, a big piece into this whole spaciousness thing as well. Like I have put so much work into building my business over the years that there is a lot of benefits I reap from that consistency. I have been consistently showing up for my business for years now. I've pivoted, I've changed. Some people have been with me for the whole journey. Some people are new. Some people have dropped off. It's all part of the whole ride. So you really never know when your payday is going to arrive. But one thing is for sure, you're never going to have a payday if you give up. So there's only one way that you are going to get paid and that's by continuing to show up and continuing to look at so many different things of like what's holding you back. And we're going to dive into a lot of those today in this episode as well. The other really big thing that I really have been driving home lately is strategy isn't everything. So many people are out there looking for the next strategy that is going to make them wealthy and help them achieve their goals and la, 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 la. But it's not actually the strategy because there are so many different strategies that work. Like, oh my God, so many Because you can give the same strategy to two different people, one of who will create epic success with that strategy and the other one who is going to have crickets. So what's the difference between the two? It's their energetics. It's their mindset. It's their beliefs. It's their unconscious programming. In business... One of my teachers teaches this, and I really truly believe this. If I look back at like my own success over the years, and even if I like talk to other successful business owners, your business success depends only twenty percent of your on your strategy and eighty percent on your energetics. 
Because even people who are not familiar with energetics and super attuned to feeling energies, etc., they still feel them. And this is why if you come from a place of lack and desperation, you repel people. You literally repel people. So you want to come from a place of abundance and safety and security, which is why nervous system work is so crucial when it comes to your business. So 80% of your success actually depends on your energetics, your mindset. And again, this is something I have personally really been leaning into. And this has been really helpful because I've been working with my coach on this. We've um, created like a little bit of a menu of all the things I do for myself, for myself, not for my business, when I am having epic success. So there's been different times over my years where I've had really great success in launches, in months, like in income, you name it. And I have started to find the commonalities in that time. And for me, it is actually a lot about having more fun, doing fun things outside of work, and having spaciousness, white space in my calendar so I can do whatever lights me up, and taking good care of myself, really focusing on my own health, making sure I move my body every day. And movement is as simple as going for two walks. There is um, my self-care practices. There is having some form of connection to my intuition. There's all these different things that I need to have in place in order for my energetics and my mindset to be at a higher level for me to attract the success. So you really don't need a great strategy to have success. Like, yes, you do. And your mindset and energetics is way more important. And this is why I am a mindset coach first and foremost, because I know that it's through mindset work, through working with the unconscious mind, through working with your nervous system, that I can truly help you achieve your goals. That's what matters. So you want to keep working on your mindset and you want to keep investing in your mindset and in your energetics because this will pay you way more than any strategy ever will. I'm about to tell you some really, really important work here. I have been in, I have invested in a new course myself personally um, that I started in August that is all about money manifestation and the nervous system. And I have learned a lot. I have learned a lot from that course and it's things I've always known but maybe didn't have the words to put to it and it really comes down to the fact that the prime directive of your unconscious mind like the top goal the main goal of your unconscious mind is to keep you safe and your nervous system is kind of like the, the working bee of your unconscious mind. So, you, so your unconscious mind uses your nervous system to get what it wants. What does that mean? That means that when your nervous, when your unconscious mind perceives that you are in, in, fre- in a threat situation, like when you're experiencing danger, it will use your nervous system to throw on the brakes. Now the problem is that your unconscious mind perceives any kind of change as negative and something that should be avoided. And this is why you can make conscious decisions to work towards your goals and to keep growing and evolving and invest in yourself and build a business. And yet if you've never done the work around your unconscious beliefs, the limiting stories, working with your nervous system, you are literally going to cock block your own results and self-sabotage. And through starting to do this work, I started to dive really into, okay, what is holding me back? Because yes, I've been having a pretty great year in business. 
you know, like I'm still on the average making between eight to 10 K a month, some months more, no months less. 8K seems to be like my minimum. <laughs> and I've only had a couple months this year where it was that low. And yet, at the same time, I haven't been able to get back to those higher income months that I experienced last year. Like having the 20K sales months, making over 16K in income. So I've no I know that there's been some kind of an energetic block there. So when I started to implement what I was learning in this new course that I invested in, I realized that my unconscious mind was blocking me. My nervous system was blocking me because when I experienced success in the past, I was out of alignment and I burned myself out and I was doing things that I thought I had to do in order to create success instead of doing the things that felt right. So here I was stuck at a glass ceiling and not able to bust through because my unconscious mind equated success with burnout. So there was a lot of work that I had to do in regards to working with my nervous system, working with my unconscious mind and starting to rewrite that story and reminding myself that I get to have success in a way that feels right for me. Hence why I've been focusing so much on my own energetics, on the spaciousness, on making sure I did fun things. And through doing this work for a month now, I was able to have my first 10 my second, my first aware yeah. 10K week. But I had to do this work with the nervous system first. And, you know, this is really something that I'm going to bring now into this next level of the Liberated Woman Mastermind, which when you're listening to this episode is in launch phase. Um, the doors will close on September 23rd. So if you're listening to this episode before September 23rd, this is going to be a huge section now of the Liberated Woman Mastermind because of my own journey and realizing what was holding me back. So I'm going to be teaching you what I've been doing to make this change as well as other tools that I've learned over the years with working with the unconscious mind. So I'm really excited for this. Because I know that this is such a big, big factor in why people aren't creating the success. Because unconsciously, there is something there that doesn't feel safe. So then your nervous system is throwing on the brakes and you're cock blocking yourself from having your most abundant, beautiful, successful life. So we need to work with the nervous system. We need to work with the unconscious mind. And, you know, it's never the fact that we are we're wanting the more money we're wanting more clients like that is not actually the goal like yes that is the like, physical goal but you're actually always chasing a feeling so the question you start to get to ask yourself is what is the feeling i believe i will have from achieving xyz so for me, my current goal that I'm working towards is 30K months in business. So excited. No idea how it's going to happen, but I'm working towards it and I have full faith. So then I've started to ask myself, what is the feeling that I'm hoping to achieve from having 30K months? And for me, the two dominant feelings is freedom and safety. Freedom and safety. So then... The next question gets to be, in order for you to call this manifestation into your reality quicker is, where in your life are you already feeling those feelings? And how can you start to become more aware of them and really feel them so that you can energetically arrive at the feeling of your manifestation already now, instead of white knuckling your goals and feeling like, oh, I'm only going to feel like this when I get X, Y, Z. 
So for me, freedom, I have so much freedom in my life. Like the fact that I run my own business full time from home, I get to create my own schedule. I have a beautiful relationship that gives me lots of space to do my own things. I have so much freedom in my life, like so much freedom. And I'm really now, like for this last month, I've been feeling into that freedom and really being conscious of it. The other thing, safety. Where am I experiencing safety in my life? My relationship. My marriage is incredible. I feel so much safety in that relationship and in who we are and who we're growing into together. So now I'm really aware that when I spend time with my husband, I'm feeling the feelings of safety. Another way that I feel safety is my home. Like I have a home above my, my head. I have a roof above my head. Like that's huge amounts of safety. So when I wake up in the morning, I tell myself, oh my God, I'm feeling so safe because I have a home. And consciously I'm tapping more into these feelings to call in my manifestation. The other big piece of manifestation work that I've now really realized and has been a huge thing of that I've been working through with my own coach is getting okay with the in-between space. Because so often we're like literally white knuckling our goals. We're holding so tight. And if things aren't moving at the timeline that we're wanting them to move, we give up on our goals. And we're just like, oh, this is never going to happen. But the thing is, you actually need to let go of the timeline. Because who cares if you're going to get your goal tomorrow, or if you're going to get it 10 years from now? Because wouldn't you rather have it 10 years from now than never have it? So we really want to stop white knuckling. We want to release the timeline. We want to release the how because you never know how you're going to ha- like achieve your goal. So you need to release that and you need to learn to trust the 11th hour miracle, which is a concept I learned like all the way back in 2022 from Gina Devim. And I, I was going back at that point through to, um, for a big promotion in my MLM business back at the, in that in those days. And I remember just being like, believe in the 11th hour miracle. Just believe in the 11th hour miracle. Just believe in the 11th hour miracle. And I literally achieved that milestone in the 11th hour. Like, it was nuts. And I've kind of been reminded of that now here in this point because in August, literally a couple days before the end of the month, I was ready to call August my second slowest income month of the year. And I was okay. I was accepting that. I was like, whatever. Like, it is what it is. I trust and surrender that everything is going to work out the way it's meant to work out. And then, bang, someone pays for 12 months of coaching with me up front. Paid in full. <laughs> Suddenly, it becomes my best month this year. 11th hour miracle. I stopped white knuckling my goals and instead I really allowed myself to release the timeline, to release the how and to feel the feelings of my manifestation now. That was probably my biggest, biggest lesson of this whole 10K week thing. Let me see what else do I have in my notes. I've been talking about most of them. I haven't found miracle, the past failures, the space in between. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, this is a this was a juicy one as well. And this actually made me think back to another time which I really have a, a whole different podcast episode on um last year when I decided to go back to a part-time job because I was on a mastermind call today or like a group coaching. Um, program call today and people were talking about the whole concept of going back to work and um, nervous system and safety and whatever anyway coming back to this episode <laughs> a week before I hit my 10k week I made some pretty scary decisions in my business I decided to drop some offers that no longer felt in alignment And it felt really, really edgy to do that because I was giving up an income stream. And yet, I was really feeling into it and those offers no longer excited me. 
So if because they no longer excited me, I wasn't showing up with my best energy for them and my clients wouldn't have gotten the best of me. So it only made sense to remove them. And do you believe it's a surprise that literally the month, like the week after I have a 10K week? No, because, and this is goes into any area of your life. Sometimes you need to let go of one thing in order to make space for something new to come in. And that letting go can feel extremely hard and scary. But this is where you really need to cultivate that self-trust and know that these things, when they come up for you, they come up for a reason. They come up for a reason. So I'm wondering, where in your life are you currently holding on to something that you know is no longer serving you? That is no longer in alignment. And yet you are too afraid to let go of it. What is it in your life that you are holding on to like that? And the final piece, which has kind of been like an aftermath piece of all of this. I shared about my 10K week on social media. Yay. Because I really believe that if I can do it, anyone can do it. And I want to set the example for other entrepreneurs that you don't need to hustle harder and work harder and work crazier hours to create more success, but that you can actually create a lot of success from a regulated nervous system with a lot of spaciousness in your day. Like that is literally the example I want to set. So I was sharing about it. I was sharing about some of my lessons and within two days, I lost 10 followers or more. And this is something I notice a lot. Anytime I share about my financial success, it triggers the hell out of people. Like in September last year, when I had my first 20K sales month and I shared about it, that really rattled a lot of people and really started name calling and calling like terrible, terrible things. And it's so interesting. And I know that a lot of other people talk on this is the whole concept of wealth and spirituality and the belief that if you are spiritual and if you're a healer and if you're helping people that you should do it for free and that you can't be successful and like make a lot of money and be spiritual and again i am here to prove you that you can have both i'm literally here to prove you that and it's so interesting to see how success repels people but coming back to the whole piece of needing to let go, there would have been a time in my past where I would have been upset about them and the people pleasing would have kicked in and I would have been like, oh, like, uh, rejection, abandonment, help, help. But now I recognize it that these people need to go in order to make space for more aligned people. And if success triggers you, if another person making money and being successful triggers you, then... That's your problem, darling. That's your problem. And I wanted to talk into this because I've talked with a lot of other successful business people about this, and um, this is actually a very common theme. So it's just a bit of a warning. If you're going to become happy and successful, you're going to trigger the fuck out of people. I have to find my notes. Um... One of my teachers said something really great about this today in the whole context of, you know, sometimes when you grow, the people around you, your relationships are starting to change and people fall off. And that's a kind of kind of part of it. What she said was, when you start to change, you fuck with the version of you that the people knew. And that rattles them. Because they literally knew one version of you and they were comfortable with that version of you. And when you're starting to grow and evolve, you are literally fucking with the version of you that they have known for their whole life. So it's natural for that to be a bit of wobbles. I'm going to leave you with that. It's been quite a few lessons. This might be like my longest solo episode I've recorded. But it was so juicy. Come and join me inside the Liberated Woman Mastermind. I'll have a link to it below 
it's going to be incredible. The, the Liberated Woman Mastermind is for the rebellious soulpreneur who wants to go against the rules that they've been told and instead create a business that lights them the fuck up and march to the beat of their own drum. Like that's the kind of entrepreneur that I'm calling into the Liberated Woman Mastermind and together we can rise higher. That's it, my love. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you for tuning into the Empower and Evolve podcast. It means so much to me that you've taken time out of your day to tune in. If you're open to it, and if you love the episode, I would love to invite you to take a couple of minutes to rate and review the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. This will help me reach new audiences and share this message more broadly. And if this episode really struck a chord with you, I would like to invite you to share it on social media and tag me at its coach cat so we can spread the love together. Until next time, I'll catch you there. Bye.